Measuring spoke offset is an absolute nightmare. Hello Internet, my name's Ryan and... Uh, my name's Neil. And today we're going to be learning how to calculate straight pull spokes. Let's go! Neil's swung by from the drop bar workshop. So quite a few wheel builds behind your belt so far? Definitely done poor, 20 or 30 maybe, but almost always traditional J-Bend stuff. So this time I've got something different and it's a bit more complicated. Luckily for Neil, I'm right nearby. Let's go! So if you're getting into wheel building, welcome on board. In another video, I've talked you through how to measure everything on your wheels in order to calculate your spokes. However, those spokes are J-Bend spokes. Today, we're dealing with the dreaded straight pull. What's the difference? A J-Bend spoke looks like this. You'll see it's got a little bend in the end. A straight pull spoke looks like that. Look at that, no bend. This is a J-Bend hub. Your spokes go through these bits. This is a straight pull hub. It looks a little bit different. All right, so the tools you're gonna need and that you're gonna need are the same for any other spoke calculation with a couple of additions. So, you know, standard stuff, folks. Grab yourself a pair of vernier calipers, digital or otherwise. You're gonna want some kind of flat surface, be that your bench or some kind of block. I find that these little axle blocks are particularly useful for quick release hubs. I recommend having a spare two or three silver straight pull spokes, a sharpie and something sharp like this blade. Right. So the great thing about calculating a straight pull hub is that it's really not too different from your standard J-Bend. We're still gonna be measuring the diameter of the flange and we're still gonna be measuring from the center of the axle to where the flange lies. The key difference is that rather than spoke hole diameter, we need to know the depth of the area where the spoke is gonna sit in the hub, and that's called the straight pull offset. A spoke offset's really hard to get right, but unfortunately, it has a direct correlation to your spoke lengths. If you get it wrong by one millimeter, your spoke length's gonna be off by one millimeter. So understanding how to measure the flanges and then spoke offset is gonna be key to getting this right. That's why I came to you. <laughs> Before we continue, exciting news though, this is the first ever video on the Ryan Builds Wheels YouTube channel to be sponsored. And for that, I wanna say a great big thanks to Alpina. Alpina have been making spokes in Italy ever since 1926, so they're nearly 100 years old. And I'm very thankful to them for reaching out to me and sending me a whole bunch of their product for me to try out at the moment. Thanks to their sponsorship, I get to try out something new and I get to focus on making more videos like this for you, the wheel building public. And so I look forward to continuing to work with them over the course of the next several videos. If you've got some specific spoke, nipple or technical questions about wheel building that you'd like answered, Alpina have given me the breathing space I require to make content like this. Cheers guys. What have you got for us today then, Neil? So we've got two jobs today. Um, we've got to replace a straight pull spoke on a DT Swiss wheel set, uh, a single front spoke that's radially laced. And then uh, the rear hub, again, straight pull, but non-radially laced. And we are replacing the rim, which was cracked, and the spokes in the wheel set uh, were all damaged. So what we've done here is sourced a replacement rim, which is a 411 rim. Yeah, so on all of the DT Swiss factory wheels, you'll often find that it's, you know, it's called the Spline 1800 or so on and so forth. And people might come to you saying, oh, I need a replacement spline rim, etc. But just be aware that throughout the entire DT Swiss factory range, they might call it the 1800 on a particular wheel set, but all of their commonly available rims are the same rims as used on their factory wheel sets. So it's interesting that you noted that you've got both the front and the rear, and mm -hmm. that the front is radially laced, whereas the rear is a tangent. And that's something you'll often find, is that there are two different sort of hub types when it comes to straight pull spokes. We're gonna go through both different types of hub, so as you're equipped with the knowledge to calculate both radial and tangent crossed wheel builds using straight pull spokes. So when it comes to a J-Bend hub, it seems really obvious where to start, but straight pull, what do I do first? Just like a J-Bend hub, we're gonna start by measuring the flange diameter. On a J-Bend hub, so as people can see at home, you'd be measuring from hole to hole. Yeah. On a straight pull hub, you've got what I call these nodules, right? Are they called nodules? Do you know what they're actually called? I've been calling them nodules for about half a decade and no one's ever told me. Flange lumps. <laughs> count the center of those nodules where the spoke holes cross within them. You can count that 
as the center of your hole. Makes sense. In this example, we'd simply measure across, lining up our vernier with the spoke holes. Easy peasy. And these nodules are something that you're always going to find on the most common tangent type of hubs. Mm -hmm. One thing I would like to point out here, of course, is you've got a 24 hole hub. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six nodules. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to measure across those. Yeah. But take a look at this Durace hub that I've got sitting around. This is only a 20 hole hub. And so it's only got five nodules. So measuring across those nodules is not really possible. So what I recommend you do is find some way of taking a, a reference. Here, I'm going to measure across the diameter of the free hub. And then you measure the depth of these nodules and add two of those. Uh, OK, that makes sense. So in this example, mm -hmm. I'm seeing a measurement of my reference, 37. Each of the nodules measured 4.5. So it would be 37 plus 9. And just like a J-Bend hub, you're going to want to measure both your drive side and your non-drive side. So I'm looking at 44 millimeters drive side, mm -hmm. and non-drive side is looking at 40. Great. Going to write that down. down. Whilst they're tricky, luckily these measurements aren't quite as critical as you might think. And it's OK to be off by about a millimeter either side. But on screen, I'm showing you how to line up the center of those holes within the nodules. On radial hubs, Measuring flange diameter is pretty simple, and I recommend just going with the outside diameter like this. When it comes to inputting it into the calculator, it is going to want to know the diameter where the spoke sits as opposed to the outside diameter, but we're going to take that into account using spoke offset. So next, we just need to measure center to flange. On a normal J-Bend hub, you'd calculate the center of your axle and measure from the center to each flange. I cover that in the video above. And it's really not too different on a straight pull hub. The nodules form the flanges, and you're going to simply take your central measurement and measure from the center to the flange. So your first step is going to be to measure across your axle and half it. So exactly 130 millimeters. Perfect. Half of 135. It's 130. <laughs> half of 130 is 65. Have you ever used an axle vise to measure center to flange? No, I haven't. First time for me. So I like to use them because they allow a nice reference point um, for where your lock nut would go. If you're using a through axle hub, then any reasonably flat surface will do. Would you like the drive or the non-drive side? Uh, I'll go with non-drive. Ah. So on the non-drive side, we measure to the center of that flange, and we get a measurement of 50. 65 minus 50 gives us the center of the flange on the drive side of 15. What have you got for the non-drive side? Well, it's 33 millimetres. Let's write it down. On to the dreaded spoke offset measurement. Right. And this is where it gets a little bit crazy. I might need to do some drawings. Really bad drawings. It'll but help. One day I'll hire an animator. Spoke offset within your nodules. So if this is a nodule, inside each nodule, you've got two areas that have been machined out where your spokes are going to go. And the spokes are going to sit here and here. Terrible drawing. <laughs> and that's but you'll get good. the idea. You try drawing something whilst you're also trying to film it. When you're left-handed as well. Here, you've got a centre line, OK? That's the centre line of the nodule. Yeah. Your spoke offset is this area here. So it's how far off-centre that spoke is going to lie. And that means that you can have both a positive and a negative offset. A positive offset would make the spokes longer and a negative right. offset would make them shorter. Right. So there's our center line. This would be an offset of zero. As it comes here, this is a positive offset. And if it were machined as a negative offset, the spoke would fit further up here. Right. I'm likely going to use an online drawing that's already been made. <laughs> that. I don't know. This one's pretty good, man. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. Oh, the joys of ADHD. We did have a great big old long section with me waffling and telling Neil how to measure straight pull spokes and how I used to do it. And then one morning I sat bolt upright at about 3 a.m. having dreamt of a better way of doing it. This is what happens to my head all the time. You try it. Such is my life. Anyway, turns out with a little bit of prodding around the internet, it was a fairly common way of doing things all along. I just feel kind of silly that I hadn't thought of it beforehand or bothered Googling it. So there you go.
So the real secret to measuring straight pull spoke offset is these boys. And these are simply a pair of straight pull spokes cut down to 100 millimeters. I've threaded mine on the end with some lovely 15 gauge nipples from Simworks because I had them around and it means that I can put these in my drawer without losing them. I'm also a great fan of the raw brass nipples that they offer. Mmm. And honestly, with this method, turns out that measuring most straight pull spoke offsets is a doddle. So let's demonstrate on this Durace hub because it's got great big flange nubbins. Step one, measure the width for the nubbins. Looks like that's about 9.5 mil. Step two, take your little spoke. This has been cut to 100 millimeters. You've got to remember the length. Now remember, straight pull spokes are measured from this area here. Not the top of the head, here, 100 mil. Insert your length of spoke through the nubbin. And now measure the length of spoke that's left sticking out, 92 millimeters. That means that there's eight mil of spoke still left in the nubbin, 100 minus 92, eight. At which point you can subtract half of the nubbin because that center line we mentioned earlier from that number. 8 minus 4.25 is 3.75. The spoke offset is 3.75. You're gonna to have to use a little bit of common sense if you ever experience a negative offset straight pull hub. That will happen if the length of the spoke sticking out minus the original length of the spoke is less than half of the flange nubbin's width. Now there's lots of different shapes of nubbin. Some can be easier to measure than others, especially when they've got a relatively flat side. Some, however, do have that kind of slope and if you have got a little bit of slope, it can be hard trying to get an idea of exactly which area you're meant to be measuring for the width. The trick is that you want to be measuring it at the area where the spokes go into it. And so if you're having any difficulties, just insert the spokes and measure the area where the spokes lie. In this case, I got 6.10, half the nubbin's gonna be 3.05. I'd probably call it three. So if you get woken up by spoke-based nightmares in the middle of the night, I recommend making a YouTube video about it. Let's crack on. So just like on my other videos, I thoroughly suggest that you use Roger Mushroom's... Roger Mushroom? Roger Mushroom. Roger Mushroom. <laughs> I thoroughly suggest that you use uh, Roger Musson's thespokelengthproject.com. The great thing about Spoke Length Project is that it will sense check everything you do mm -hmm. and that it can do multiple different types of wheel. You'll see here, that if I go from normal, J-Bend, and switch it to straight pull, what's going to happen is that spoke hole diameter is going to become spoke offset. And if you click spoke offset, here's that diagram. Definitely better than my drawing. As, as Roger mentions, it's often difficult to measure. So with any luck, the hub manufacturer would tell you, try for a set of decisions that are gonna to lead to a slightly longer spoke length. And I'll show you the tip to account for that after this. So, nice and easy. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna, nice and easy, nice, We're just gonna input the measurements that we took earlier. Dry, hub diameter. Yep. 44. Uh, for drive side, yeah, 39 for non-drive side. Lovely, what were your flange offsets? Uh, drive side, 15. Non-drive side 33. Lovely. And we decided that we're going to have account for a two mil spoke offset. What did you get for your ERD, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've seen on the internet some randoms posted 599 millimeters. Oh, Neil, have you not watched my video about how you're measuring ERD incorrectly? You'd best visit either this link or that one. We never know where it's going to go. We'll fix it in post. As an addendum, Neil really does know how to measure ERD. He's just my full guy for this video. <laughs> the ERD on Neil's rim, having measured it in-house, is 601. It's a 24-spoke wheel, and you're going to be crossing the spokes twice. You're using a, a fin-bladed spoke, and we've now input both our hub and rim measurements. We can hit calculate. And for anything on the spoke length project, as Roger mentions both in his excellent book, and if you click this title here, we must round those spoke lengths up. As such, 299.5 becomes 300, yep. and 297.1 is going to become 298. It's worth noting that on any tangent type straight pull hub, of course, the number of crosses that you're going to have is fixed. Yeah. So what you can do to check that is to grab a bunch of spokes and to put them through your hub and see how many times they cross each other. And the important thing is that the cross inside the nodule doesn't count. So you've got a two cross hub. So whilst it's a little bit complicated and hard to be exact, 
we've done our very best to measure our straight pull hubs. I do have one final tip to help make sure that your spoke lengths aren't too short. Always far better to have spokes that are too long mm -hmm. rather than too short, yeah. otherwise you're gonna shear your nipples. Ooh, uh, I hate, I hate the, the yeah, double entendres. When you phone a customer and say there's a problem with your nipples, not again. And for that, I like to recommend that you always use some kind of double square or double drive nipple that's got this additional area up top that's going to allow you to account for any rounding. I'm sure you can take away some Alpina nipples with you to try them out. That'd be great. Let's get your spokes cut. Let's get you back on the road. All right, man. Thanks. Thanks, Neil. Cheers. <laughs> that's it, wheel nerds. That's how you calculate straight pull spokes. I hope that's been super useful. If you've got any questions or if you want to suggest your own methods, please drop them down in the comments below. Thanks very much for being here. Thanks very much to Alpina and thanks very much to all of my members of the Ryan Builds Wheels Patreon community who chuck us a few quid every month to give me even more breathing space to make more of this content, helping you to build better wheels and to get a little bit deeper with your nerdy wheel knowledge. So until then, See you next time, Spoke Nerds. You all meant to have gone home.